We're going to examine the relay test unit that we built, and the schematic is shown right here. It's essentially a pair of variacs, which are variable auto transformers, used to provide an adjustable current to test a protective relay, in this case an overcurrent relay. That's all it's designed to do. The schematic is shown here. We showed the two variacs, which are both, I should say, each powered by 120 volt AC line power, and then each variac feeds into a step-down transformer. These happen to be 480 to 120 volt transformers. Since the voltage coming out of the variac reaches a maximum of about 130 volts or so, we're nowhere near the limit of 480. So we're essentially just using these transformers as a 4 to 1 step down ratio. So the fact that it's rated for 480 input does not mean we have to apply 480 volts. It's simply a 4 to 1 step down ratio transformer. Each variac feeds into an identical step down transformer. This one is connected in a series boosting configuration. So this voltage right here is added to the primary that this transformer sees. And what that does is it allows us to have a coarse and fine adjustment. This variac provides its full output power to the winding of that transformer. This variac gets stepped down by a ratio of 4 to 1, and that gets added to the voltage of the second variac to go into that transformer. The idea being that a full span on this variac has less of an effect on this voltage than full span here. So fine and coarse. Coming out of here, we have our uh, second uh, stage step-down transformer. We feed into the third uh, stage of our step-down transformation. This is a 120 to 24 volt ratio transformer. So it is intended for 120 volts primary and uh, 24 volts secondary. Once again, we're not feeding it anywhere near 120 volts. Even at the maximum settings of these variacs, we're only putting in maybe about 140, 150 volts uh, 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 maximum to that, which gets stepped down by a factor of 4 to 1. So even this sees a reduction in voltage. We chose this in particular because this transformer here, the big heavy one, has a secondary winding rating of 20 amps, and we wanted something with big, heavy secondary windings that can output continuous current to our relay under test. We've also included a shunt resistor, a 1 milliohm shunt resistor, and that 1 milliohm shunt resistor is there so we can attach a voltmeter and be able to measure the amount of current going to the relay. Um, this hasn't worked out so well for us because most of our handheld digital multimeters don't do very well measuring small amounts of AC millivoltage. They don't settle all the way down to zero, and so we get significant errors trying to measure current this way. So for today's test, what we're going to see is a a uh, handheld multimeter connected in series with this test unit directly measuring the AC current. Our multimeters have a 10 amp maximum current range, which is well within the range that this test set uh, can provide. So no danger of blowing a fuse. But the eventual goal is to have a sensitive AC millivolt meter we can connect here and be able to measure current without directly intercepting the current to the relay. So now we look at the panel itself and at the front display of the panel, you see our coarse current adjustment and our fine current adjustment. These are both variacs, as was mentioned before, variable auto transformers. There are no dials on here. There's really no point in putting dials on here because this is not a calibrated setting. This is simply increase, decrease, increase, decrease, coarse, and fine. We have a power switch for turning power on and off. We have the output current terminals for the current going to the relay under test. Then here we have our connection for the 1 milliohm shunt, which as I mentioned we're not going to be using today because our handheld multimeters cannot measure low millivoltages in AC very well. So we're just going to connect our multimeter in series with the output current here. And I'll demonstrate that. We have a Fluke 87.3 multimeter, which will connect directly to the output current terminals of our test unit. And I'm going to set this for current. It's in the high range setting, the 10 amp fused setting. This is going to be AC current. I will lock in the range so you can see how much current we're measuring. And we'll let it settle down to zero. So at this point, the power is off on our test set. I'll turn the coarse and the fine adjustments all the way down to minimum. And then uh, before I turn the power on, we'll pan back to the meter. And we'll see that it's nearly settled at the zero amp um, mark. So now I'll turn the power on. We don't get any uh, current here. It's still settled in its minimum setting uh, because our coarse and fine adjustments are all the way down to zero. I'll take the fine adjustment first and turn it about halfway. And you can see here we get um, 
less than half of an amp of current. Now I can take this course adjustment and turn it up, and I will demonstrate adjusting this to a value of about 4 amps. So I'm going to take my course adjustment and get as close as I can to a value of 4 amps using the course knob. When I cannot get any closer to my goal, what I will do is move over to the fine adjustment knob, turn that until I see exactly the amount of current that I desire. So it is reading 4 amps right there. Now, 3.99, there we go. I'll turn it up just a tab. It's important to point out the way this circuit functions. This is not actually a current source per se. It is a low voltage source with a high current capacity. And because it is really nothing more than a voltage source, the amount of current that we get out of this unit is not only dependent upon our adjustments here, but it's also dependent upon the resistance of our test wiring and whatever device that we're testing. So the protective relay, the amount of burden that it poses to the current, will have an effect on the amount of current that this uh, outputs for any given dial settings. So right now I'm adjusted pretty close to 4 amps, and that's with a direct short into our fluke meter. What I'm going to do now is turn this off without adjusting the knobs. I'm simply going to turn that off. And now I'm going to connect this in series with a protective relay, and we'll see the difference that makes. So I'm going to disconnect this wire right here. I'm going to go over to my protective relay. I have the test switches already disconnected, so I can insert or inject current into the relay without any danger of interference in the rest of the system. I'll come over here, complete my connection. So now when I turn the test set on, what's going to happen is we will be injecting an AC current into the operating coil of this general electric time over current relay. And notice I have not touched the knobs. The knobs are still in the positions I left them in, the coarse and the fine. If you recall, when we had the meter connected here in a direct short, it measured 4.00 amps. We're going to see significantly less current now, even with the same knob settings, because now this test set is trying to apply the same voltage to a greater impedance. It is now driving the impedance of the operating coil in the relay, as well as one additional test lead. So, watch what happens when I turn the power switch on. Take a look at that meter and see where the current goes. So, 2.76 amps, 2.77 amps. I'll turn it back off. It was 4 amps before, so that's a significant reduction, a significant burdening of the output current of this test set, simply because I've connected it to a load. So what I'm going to do now, what I'll need to do now, is if I intend to test the relay at a setting of 4 amps, I will need to turn it on and readjust my coarse and fine knobs until I get to the 4 amp setting I desire. Then once I do that, I can turn it off, and I can turn it back on. You should jump right to the 4 amp setting I left it at if my circuit impedance has not changed. So that is how we would typically operate this test set, is we would <coughs> turn it on, adjust it to the current setting we want as it is powering the burden that we intend it to power. And then after that, we would turn the power switch on and begin our timing test, if we're going to be doing time test of a time over current relay. This is very primitive. It's about as simple and primitive as we can get, but it was economical. It only cost us a few hundred dollars to build this, and it's going to be uh, a useful tool for us later on as we study more about protective relays. There is one additional feature. There is one additional feature that we would like to add to this relay. This summer, as we study programmable logic controllers, I would like to have a student team add a PLC inside the case of this test set with a graphical display, an HMI panel with touch screen. And what I want to add to this uh, test set is a solid state relay and a timer on the PLC that's connected to the third set of test jacks. This will enable us to connect the trip contacts of the relay to the test set and allow this to measure and detect when the relay contacts have tripped and have the PLC time the duration that it takes for that relay to go through its time over current function. That will enable us to do a precise test of relay operation. Right now, the best we can do is a manual test where we flip it on manually and use a stopwatch to time, and that's simply not accurate enough. No one in their right mind would try to uh, calibrate a protective relay in that fashion. 
So we will be adding more features to this test set later on. But for right now, it's a manually adjustable, low voltage source with a high current capacity, and that will serve to demonstrate basic functions of protective relays.